Excuse me, little dog. Hi, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization and everything else here in absolute paradise. It is a Wednesday. It is Wednesday, August 23rd, 2023, I believe. And guys, I am getting ready to embark on something I have never done in my entire life in my YouTube career in all its incantations. I have stumbled upon, thanks to Yahoo News and unbelievably that, normally that hopium, techno-utopian uh, pile of garbage named Popular Mechanics, I have stumbled today onto the single, the single and most spot on, just flat out, straight ahead, unambiguous, and I would add fearless spelling out what is going on on this planet and why we are so completely doomed. Uh, if, if, <clears throat> if you read one, well, I guess, uh, I don't know what you would call this. This is beyond an essay. If you read one thing in your life, trying to figure out why we are doomed, why humanity is doomed, why this living planet is doomed, you need to sit here and read every single word of this new flat out in your face explanation by my hero, <clears throat> William Reese, William Reese, a professor, uh, he's a evolutionary biologist of some sort, population ecologist from uh, up there in British Columbia at the university, and you can find my interview with William Reese from a couple of years ago, which is one of the best interviews I have ever had. William Reese understands what is going on on this planet and is able to put it into language that, well, I mean, clueless morons obviously are not going to understand this, but anybody with a brain who uh, can handle the truth, uh, William Reese... Uh, he's always been one of my top heroes with this work of, th this masterpiece, this, uh, his grand opus, William Reese has catapulted himself into my number one all-time hero of explaining the collapse of everything. He is, he is shot past Jared Diamond, okay? Uh, this guy knows what he is talking about, and you need to pay attention. Anybody trying to understand. You, never, you don't have to read anything else. So what I am going to do, something I have never done before, I am going to split this up into five videos. I'm going to do one video every day for five days because I don't want to overwhelm you. Obviously, I'll put the link on here and uh, advise you to read this yourself. Uh, but if you want to sit down and listen to some old doomer reading this, I will be, this is what I will be doing every day for the next five days. And, uh, so the little dog might as well get used to it, uh, because we got a lot to talk about. And so, as I say, I found this. And good old Yahoo News this morning. 
and from Popular Mechanics. Uh, the Popular Mechanics article was titled, Humans are on the verge of a population correction by 2099, scientist warns. <coughs> and so uh, then they link you over to uh, William Reese's newest essay from this outfit simply called World. World. Uh, never heard of uh, of this thing called World uh, by William Reese from the School of Community and Regional Planning Faculty of Applied Sciences, the University of British Columbia, Vancouver, B.C. And the title of this uh, Modus Operandi it, it, I'm sorry, Magnus Opus is the human ecology of overshoot. Why a major population correction is inevitable. And I'm going to read uh, the abstract, the introduction and purpose and the chapter titled The Nature and Nurture of Overshoot, and then we will continue tomorrow. So hopefully this camera battery will not collapse on us. Take it away, William Reese, and explain to us why we are doomed, starting with the abstract. <clears throat> Homo sapiens has evolved to reproduce exponentially, expand geographically, and consume all available resources. For most of humanity's evolutionary history, such expansionist tendencies have been countered by negative feedback. However, the scientific revolution and the use of fossil fuels reduced many forms of negative feedbacks, you know, which used to keep our population in check, enabling us to realize our full potential for exponential growth. This natural capacity is being reinforced by growth-oriented neoliberal economics. Nurture complements nature. Problem. The human enterprise is a dissipative structure and subsystem of the ecosphere. It can grow and maintain itself only by consuming and dissipating available energy and resources extracted from its host system, the ecosphere, and discharging waste back into its host. The population increase from one to eight billion and 100-fold expansion of real gross world product in just two centuries on a finite planet has thus propelled modern techno-industrial society into a state of advanced overshoot. We, meaning humans, are consuming and polluting the biophysical basis of our own existence. Climate change is the best known symptom of overshoot, but mainstream solutions will actually exacerbate will actually accelerate climate disruption and worsen overshoot. Humanity is exhibiting the characteristic dynamics of a one-off population boom-bust cycle. The global economy will inevitably contract and humanity will suffer a major population correction in this century.
<clears throat> okay, so that was the abstract. So here is the introduction before we dive into it. Introduction and purpose. <clears throat> this paper examines the human population conundrum through the lens of human evolutionary ecology and the role of available energy. My starting premises are as follows. Number one, modern techno-industrial society is in a state of advanced ecological overshoot. And then he refers you to William Catton's uh, book, Overshoot, for uh, to dig deeper into this. Overshoot means that even at current global average inadequate material standards, the human population is consuming even replenishable and self-producing resources faster than ecosystems can regenerate and is producing entropic waste in excess of the ecosphere's assimilative capacity. In short, humanity has already exceeded the long-term human carrying capacity of the Earth. The fossil-fueled eight-fold increase in human numbers and 100-fold expansion of real gross world product in the past two centuries are anomalies. They also constitute the most globally significant ecological phenomenon in 250,000 years of human evolutionary history with major implications for life on Earth. Homo sapiens is an evolving species a product of natural selection and still subject to the same natural laws and forces affecting the, level, the evolution of all living organisms. Efforts to address the human demographic anomaly and resulting eco-crisis without attempting to override innate human behaviors that have become maladaptive are woefully incomplete and doomed to fail. <clears throat> Within this framing, the overall objective of this paper is to make the case that on its present trajectory and regardless of the much lauded demographic and so-called renewable energy transitions, the sheer number of humans and scale of economic activity are undermining the functional integrity of the ecosphere and compromising essential life support functions. Unaddressed, these trends may well precipitate both global economic contraction and a significant human population correction, i.e. civilizational collapse, later in this century. And so uh, then we head into the chapter the nature and nurture of overshoot. And I'm just going to make this part of video one and then we'll do the other chapters after today. Okay, the nature and nurture of overshoot. Both nature and nurture contribute to the overshoot crisis, but the natural component is mostly ignored. Indeed, most denizens of modern techno-industrial society do not think of themselves as products of evolution, i.e. of Darwinian natural selection. Many resent even being reminded that they are animals. 
ironically, part of the reason for such denial resides in humanity's extraordinary evolutionary success. We are the dominant and certainly the most numerous large mammal species on Earth. As much of this success is attributable to the abundance of resources made available by improving technology, cultural evolution receives all the credit. However, basic biology underpins all human cultures. Even the capacity for socio-cultural organization is itself an evolved trait. Of particular relevance to the present context, there are three innate abilities and predispositions that humans share with other species. Unless constrained by negative feedbacks, as we used to be, populations of Homo sapiens, one, are capable of exponential geometric growth, two, tend to consume all available resources, a highly adaptive trait in the absence of refrigeration or other preservation techniques or in the face of intense competition from neighboring tribes, and three, will Homo sapiens will expand to occupy all accessible human habitats. Significantly, in the case of humans, both the availability of resources and suitability of habitat are constantly being upwardly refined by technology, thus amplifying the underlying genetic predispositions. <clears throat> we will return to population dynamics in a later section. Consider first industrial humanity's characteristically insatiable demand for resources and habitat, abetted by improving exploitation technologies Homo sapiens is depleting the seas and forests, has otherwise diminished wild nature, has destroyed a third of Earth's arable soil and landscapes, has mined out the richest deposits of many mineral and metal ores, and in just a couple of centuries has run through the high quality half of the massive stocks of fossil energy that took tens of millions of years to accumulate. Society's dependence on fossil fuels is one reason why the modern techno industrial mainstream sees an ice free Arctic ocean not so much as a climate catastrophe, but as the opening up of new trade routes and exposing the Arctic basin to oil and gas development. Meanwhile, having depleted the richest sources of dry land mineral resources, some industries and countries are gearing up to mine the seafloor. We will scour the bottom of our earthly barrel. Looking ahead still, others have set their sights on the presumed mineral wealth of asteroids or the moon as the next resource troves to be served up for exploitation. This last point also hints at the third crucial trait noted above humanity's spatial expansionism. Can you think of any ecologically comparable species with a geographic range even remotely as large as that of Homo sapiens? Hint, there is none. Driven by our natural expansionist imperative, 
humans have colonized the entire planet, there is no significant patch of human habitable landscape left on Earth that we have not long since claimed as our own. We even occupy certain habitats that are fundamentally hostile to human existence. Think Antarctic field stations. Meanwhile, various entrepreneurs and humanist dreamers would have us colonize the moon or Mars not only for their resource potential, but to ensure against the extinction of Homo sapiens should earthly life support systems fail under the weight of human demands. One might expect that an intelligent social species would devise cultural overrides to rein in potentially dangerous expansionist tendencies on a finite planet. Rather remarkably, the opposite is the case. One of the most important roots of overshoot is modern techno-industrial society's belief in human exceptionalism, the idea that Homo sapiens is fundamentally different from other species. Exceptionalists posit that human individual and social behaviors are culturally rather than genetically determined, that human ingenuity can overcome resource scarcities, that we are not otherwise bound by the laws and limits of nature. The corresponding economic paradigm, neoliberal economics, which currently underpins global development, implicitly assumes that the economy and the environment are separate systems so that the former, propelled by continuous technological advances, can grow indefinitely, unconstrained by the latter. Hubristic nurture unabashedly reinforces expansionist nature. This, the evidence is compelling that human exceptionalism, exceptionalism is a deeply flawed construct, a grand cultural illusion that has led modern techno-industrial societies into a potentially fatal ecological trap. While culture contributes unique dimensions to humanity's evolutionary trajectory, this does not exempt humans from the same fundamental principles governing the evolution of non-human life forms. The conflict between mass delusion and biophysical reality is increasingly evident in the destabilization of the ecosphere induced by the excessive scale of the human enterprise. No one should be surprised, as ecological economist Herman Daly consistently argued, <clears throat> far from floating in splendid isolation, quote, the human economy is a fully contained, wholly dependent growing subsystem of the non-growing ecosphere. Consider the implications of Daly's insight for biodiversity loss, one of the most urgent symptoms of overshoot. Homo sapiens is just one of an estimated 8.7 million species of animals and plants and countless millions additional species of bacteria, fungi, and other microbes. Most of these life forms are dependent on a tiny fraction of solar energy fixed as biomass through photosynthesis by green plants. Pl 
plants require up to half of this gross primary production for their own growth and reproduction, so only the remainder, the so-called net primary production, is available for other life forms. This residual, sub, this residual supports all animal life, including humans, which means that we are competing with millions of other species for a share of a continuous but limited flux of biomass through the ecosphere. Humans, of course, have a technological leg up in the competition. Our high intelligence, technology assisted harvesting techniques and fossil fueled ability to transform entire landscapes to suit human needs means that for centuries humans have been increasing their appropriations from the annual global flow of biomass energy. Fowler and Hobbes even ask whether, in terms of common eco-variables, contemporary Homo sapiens is still ecologically normal. Their data show that in terms of energy use and therefore carbon dioxide emissions, biomass consumption and various other ecologically significant indicators human demands on supportive ecosystems dwarf those of similar species by orders of magnitude. For example, human consumption of biomass exceeds the upper 95% confidence limits for biomass ingestion by 95 other non-human mammal species by 100-fold. As previously noted, humanity's geographic range is unequaled, exceeding the upper 95% confidence limit for the range of 523 other mammal species by a factor of 10. Bottom line, like other living organisms, Homo sapiens have evolved biologically to self-maximize. However, combined with our unique cultural prowess, human <clears throat> abilities for growth vastly outstrip those of all other species, as is demonstrated by our domination of the biosphere. The consequences for non-human animal species are catastrophic for what should be obvious reasons. Not only do we typically overexploit targeted resource species, but any biomass the human tribe takes for its own purposes is irreversibly unavailable to competing organisms. Humanity's foraging superiority means the, the competitive displacement of other species from their food sources and habitats. The other species consequently decline or die off. While Homo sapiens comprises only 0.01% of the total earthly biomass, the expansion of the human enterprise has eliminated 83% of wild animal and 50% of natural plant biomass. From a fraction of 1% 10,000 years ago, Humanity now constitutes 32% and our domestic livestock another 64% of the planet's much expanded mammalian biomass. All wild species 
combined account for the other 4%. Similarly, domestic poultry now comprises 70% of the Earth's remaining bird biomass, and commercial fishing depletes the ocean at the expense of rapidly declining fish-dependent marine mammals and birds. Seabirds are the most threatened bird group with a 70% community level population decline between 1950 and 2010. The remaining populations of monitored vertebrate species have also declined by 70% in the past half century. <clears throat> Uh, okay, uh, guys, I have got to check to see this is, okay, I guess I'm going to keep going. The battery, uh, th th this is, is truly, I mean, this is a book-length manuscript. I really wish you would uh, read this yourself because I can tell I uh, might have to uh, divide this up into more uh, chapters. Um, these and related data suggest that our species has become directly or indirectly the dominant macro consumer in all major terrestrial and accessible marine ecosystems on the planet. Indeed, Homo sapiens may well be the most voraciously successful carnivorous and herbivorous vertebrate ever to walk the earth, but at the expense of thousands of other species the growth of the human enterprise population and economy on a finite planet is the greatest factor contributing to plunging biodiversity. Reduced human populations almost anywhere are necessary to preserve remaining patches of non-human life on Earth. Of course, biodiversity loss is only one major symptom of overshoot. Overshoot is a meta problem. The cause of climate change, including desertification, faltering ocean circulation, etc., overshoot is the cause of land and soil degradation, tropical deforestation, ocean acidification, fisheries collapses, sinking water tables, incipient, incipient food shortages, plastic and other chemical contamination of food chains, failing sperm counts, increasing cancer rates, pandemics, the pollution of everything, etc. Virtually all so-called environmental problems are co-symptoms of overshoot. We humans are depleting and, and contaminating the biophysical basis of our own existence. In the process, the human enterprise has also become the most significant of contemporary geological forces. People move up to 24 times as much material around as all the natural geological processes combined. Little wonder that the sheer weight of human-made stuff now exceeds the living biomass on Earth. Welcome to the Anthropocene. 
there is more than a touch of irony lurking behind these biophysical realities. Economists and techno-optimists hallucinate that the economy is dematerializing or further decoupling from the material world on such simplistic grounds that the ratio of carbon emissions or resource use per unit of GDP is declining. The above data illuminate the contrary fact that in terms of what really matters to nature, the expanding human ecological niche, humans are actually becoming an even greater and more destructive integral component of the ecosphere. Indeed, the human enterprise is effectively subsuming the ecosphere. Nevertheless, the bizarrely nonsensical myth of decoupling persists. Politicians lean on technology, efficiency, and dematerialization to argue that there is no inherent conflict between the continued growth of the economy and the environment. They speak from naivete or ignorance, but the assertion encourages the all-too-willing public to share in one of the most toxic of humanity's panoply of illusions. So, why is nobody listening? In light of the cascading hard evidence, it seems fair to ask why the mainstream media do not report on, and most ordinarily, ordinary people have never heard of, overshoot or good for the mainstream media and Yahoo News and Popular Mechanics today. It's the reason I found this. Much of the reason may be simple denial, but part of the problem may well reside in cognitive incompetence. Homo sapiens evolved in simpler, more slowly changing times that posed relatively limited challenges to the evolving central nervous system. We operate with what are still essentially Paleolithic brains. Modern humans are painfully short-sighted, tend to think in terms of immediate cause-effect relationships, and respond to problems in simplistic, reductionist ways, think dematerialization. The cognitive mode was adequate in pre-agricultural times. However, in recent centuries, cultural evolution, the emergence of multi-layered cultures, global institutions, and near-magical technologies has outpaced bioevolution. Our brains are arguably ill-adapted to the pace of change and compounding complexities of the human-made Anthropocene. We have rendered ourselves cognitively obsolete. Perhaps the most obvious example is the global fixation on climate change as the existential threat facing civilization. The media may be temporarily sidetracked by the recent pandemic, regional famines, the growing refugee crisis, or the Russo-Ukraine war, but the focus is still on one isolated issue at a time. Rarely do the media do the media even serious analysts, and certainly not most politicians, connect the dots to see these issues as springing from a common root in overshoot. Even the term polycrisis, many parallel related problems, 
does not quite cut it. Modern techno-industrial peoples simply do not get complexity, nor do they comprehend the, the lags, thresholds, and unpredictably discontinuous behaviors of the overlapping complex systems under stress from overshoot. This is crucially important if only because while no major symptom of overshoot can be adequately addressed in isolation from the others, addressing overshoot directly would reduce all important symptoms simultaneously. And tomorrow we will get to my favorite subject, the population connection. I will be amazed if I'm not talking to myself. Come back tomorrow for part two. Bye, guys. Still going. I don't believe it. Okay, little dog. What did you think of the most spot-on analysis of overshoot and why we are doomed that I have ever found in my entire life? What is your opinion of ecological overshoot? What a gorgeous day. I am off to the to the laundromat to overshoot some sheets or to wash my oversheets while I still can. My gosh.